Hey, it's Pastor Mike. If you enjoy listening to this podcast and make it a regular part of your day, can I ask for your regular support? We really can't make any of our sermon series or devotions without the continual support of friends like you. Time of Grace, in case you didn't know, is 100% donor-funded, meaning it is your gifts that make it possible for us to use television and print and digital media to share the good news of God's amazing grace. Just click on the link in the episode notes, and thank you for all of your prayers and all of your support. God bless. Do you think it's wise to carry a weight that's too heavy for you? You might picture a toddler trying to pick up a big box off a coffee table, or a high school athlete trying to bench press too much weight, or a frail old lady setting her walker aside to try and push a big, heavy cabinet. In all of those scenarios, that's the type of setting where people get hurt. That's not wise at all. Throughout this series, we are going to see some case studies of people that are carrying around some sizable weight, but they're not carrying it on their shoulders. It's not back breaking at all. It's a weight that they're carrying on their heart and on their soul. These are case studies about guilt. We will not only see the sizable weight that they are carrying around and what that does to them, we'll also see what God did for them and what he aims to do for you as well. One of the great places to turn to understand guilt is to the Old Testament. 1000 BC, roughly, there was this great king by the name of David. Now, each of us knows what it takes to ruin a reputation. And then there are other things that can land a person on the evening news. Well, there was this time when David did just that. You see, his army went off to war and David stayed behind and he saw this beautiful woman and he called for her, even though he had everything he ever needed, including a wife and more, he called for her and he slept with her and she became pregnant. He tried to cover it up by calling the woman's husband from the battlefield, but the soldier was too loyal and never went home. And so David tried again and it didn't work. And then he sent the soldier back and hatched a plan to have this soldier murdered. And he did. And then David took this woman home as his wife, and it looked like he got away with it. But if you look elsewhere in the Bible, you see David describe how he didn't get away with it at all. In fact, in one of the prayers that he wrote in Psalm 32, he pulls back the curtain to his heart and soul to describe what happens when a person is inflicted with guilt, especially over large mistakes and big blunders in life. He said, it felt like the Lord's hand was heavy upon me. It's like that athlete who's got that bench press bar pressing down upon the sternum and there's no end in sight. That kind of describes the weight that guilt can have upon a person's heart and soul. And maybe you've been there. I know I have. When you look at the mistakes that you've made in the past and you just can't go back and undo them. When you think of the words that you spoke that wounded people deeply, or maybe it was a a massive mistake that everyone around you still remembers. No matter what it is, those types of big mistakes end up being a heavy weight of guilt that weighs down upon the soul. And so what do you do when the guilt seems to be too great? Well, David goes on in Psalm 32 to say this, I confessed my transgressions to the Lord and he forgave the guilt of my sin. He uses two words that have pictures to them. Transgression means to to cross the line that God has this line that we're not supposed to cross and yet we do. Sin means that we miss the mark. God is very clear and specific on what we're supposed to do and not do. And anytime we miss that mark, that's called sin. And so that helps us understand something very clear about guilt. And that is, it's not just a feeling. It's actually a record of where we stand before God in our relationship to him. The world in which we live would like to say that guilt is just an intuition or a feeling, but that's not the case. It's where we stand with God. And so what to do when the guilt is too great? I I talked with a woman, a 30-something recently, and she said, I tried to ignore it for over a year. I tried to ignore it even for the last several months, and I just couldn't until, and she did one specific thing, and she said, until I did this, and it was like a weight was lifted off my soul. She did exactly what David did. 
I confessed my transgressions to the Lord and he forgave the guilt of my sin. That word forgive baked into that word is this idea of lifting up and lifting up not only the weight, but lifting up and rescuing the ones who are crushed under that weight. So no matter if your guilt is sizable, massive, great or not, there is a God who does not make us strong enough to carry that weight around on our own. Instead, with his great mercy and the strength of his love, he lifts that weight off. More than that, in his love and forgiveness, he lifts us up too. So there is a weight that is too heavy to carry, and maybe it's important to recognize that. But the weight of our guilt is never too heavy for our gracious God.